Monday, April 8th, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about human freedom and how it rests on gold, redeemable money. And that's actually a title of uh, an article written by Howard Buffett, a congressman from Nebraska in 1948, who happened to be Warren Buffett's father as well. Um, and uh, I've spoken about this before, but for my new viewers and subscribers, uh, this will uh, just show how important precious metals are, not just because uh, you think the prices are going to go up, and uh, it shows you that you can't treat it as a trade, but something much more important uh, than that, that it's very important for uh, your economic freedom. Uh, as an individual, and hopefully uh, it will come back as something for the whole of society and the world in general, uh, hopefully, I guess. Uh, before that, of course, before I look into this uh, essay, it's only about five pages, I'll look at what the markets are doing this morning. It's just uh, around 7.30 a.m. London. So we've got uh, spot gold up four and a half uh, dollars at uh, 12.96. Uh, the range overnight has been 12.9050 to 12.97. So we're near the top. Uh, silver is up only about three cents. So it's underperforming gold. It's at 15.13. Our range has been 1507 to 1520. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the Dow Future is down 106 points or 0.4 of a percent at 26,314. S&P uh, 500 Future is uh, down five at 2887, down 0.12 of a percent. Uh, NASDAQ 100 Future is down 12 at 75.65. What about the dollar and the other uh, fiat currencies? While the pound is up about 18 pips or 0.14 of a percent at 130.54, uh, the euro is up 12 pips against the dollar or 0.1 of a percent at 112.26. Dollar is down a quarter of a percent against the yen at 111.43, and the uh, Dollars up 0.2 of a percent against the Chinese. You won at 672. Uh, uh, oil prices. Well, we've got uh, WTI crude up almost half a percent at 63.41, and we've got Brent crude up also almost half a percent at 70.53. So uh, oil prices continue to move to creep higher. They're moving higher here. Uh, the uh, bond market, we've got, uh, let's see, the 10-year yield right now is at uh, just below 2.5%. Uh, it's at 249. That's down about one basis points. Uh, the uh, three-month to the seven-year uh, is right now uh, inverted by about three basis points. So the curve has improved in terms of giving positive signal about the economy. But uh, I don't think we are out of the woods yet. Uh, if we see continued uh, weakness, if the stock markets uh, move further down uh, today, when the U.S. comes in, you could see that curve uh, move towards, you know, yields drop and people buy bonds. Human freedom rests on gold, redeemable money. Uh, I'll put the link to this essay uh, below in the description so you can read it. Uh, I read it many years ago, and uh, <laughs> was one of the uh, essays or articles that convinced me that uh, we needed a, a sound and honest system. So, written by Honorable Howard Buffett, U.S. Congressman from Nebraska, reprinted from the Commercial and Financial Chronicle, May 6, 1948. So this is just after World War II. Uh, don't forget... Back in 1948, it was illegal for Americans to own monetary gold or bullion. Of course, you could have jewelry, but in 1933, uh, FDR uh, made it illegal. And it wasn't until 19, January 1st, 1975, that it became legal again to uh, own gold in the U.S. So what does he uh, talk about? Well, uh, 
in the beginning it says, is there a connection between human freedom and a gold redeemable money? At first glance, it would seem that money belongs to the world of economics and human freedom to the political sphere. But when you recall that one of the first moves by Lenin, Mussolini and Hitler was to outlaw individual ownership of gold, you begin to sense that there may be some connections between money redeemable in gold and the rare prize known as human liberty. So uh, when I talk about gold and uh, the system, it's not that I'm looking for gold to go <laughs> to the moon and to make a mint. Uh, of course, it's nice when the price reflects all the inflation that they've created over, you know, since 1980, for example, we've gone in the US from uh, national debt just under a trillion to almost 22 trillion now. As we know, uh, debt is the other side of the coin of fiat money. What does he uh, go on to say here? He says, in a free country, the monetary unit rests upon a fixed foundation of gold or gold and silver independent of the ruling politicians. Our dollar was that kind of money before 1933. Under the system, under, under that system, paper currency is redeemable for a certain weight of gold at the free option and choice of the holder of paper money. So he's actually not even calling for a full, just a, a gold system. He's calling for redeemable and even paper money. He also says redemption rights ensure, ensure stability. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, go over here a little bit. It says that that redemption right gives money a large degree of stability. The owner of such gold redeemable currency has economic independence. He can move around either within or without his country because his money holdings have accepted value anywhere. So there you go, people who say, oh, you can't eat your gold, you can't eat your silver. No, gold and silver are money everywhere in the world, and they, they are ac accepted everywhere. I was on to say here, I, I won't go through the whole article, I I'll go through the most important parts. You have heard a lot of oratory on inflation from politicians in both parties. Actually, that oratory and the inflation maneuvering around here are mostly sly efforts designed to lay the, lay the blame on the other party's doorstep. All our politicians regularly announce their intention to stop inflation. I believe I can show that until they move to restore our right to own gold, that talk is hogwash. Uh, you might, a lot of people might say today, oh, but the problem nowadays is that we don't have enough inflation. And that's hogwash as well, because they've learned uh, the politicians and the bankers the Fed, at the Federal Reserve that they, they need to lie about inflation and what inflation really is. And uh, they do that through uh, corrupting the meaning of inflation, saying it's CPI, by manipulating the CPI a lot lower. John Williams of shadowstats.com uh, shows how if we calculated CPI like they did in the 80s or 90, it would be more like 10%, 6, 10%, not the two or one, one and a half percent that we have today um well and gold is purely a monetary uh, phenomenon you know we've gone from as i said a trillion dollars to 22 trillion and not uh, in the national debt or in the money money supply that's not even counting all the the missing trillions that's not counting the unfunded liability uh, liabilities that run into the dozens of trillions as well. He he says as well, paper systems end in collapse. Uh, we know that, don't we? All fiat money returns to zero. The budget and paper money. So what does he say about that? Under the Streamlining Act passed by Congress in 1946, the Senate and the House were required to fix a maximum budget each year. In 1947, the Senate and the House could not reach an agreement on this maximum budget. So that law was ignored. So what's the importance of gold and the budget? He says, uh, before 1933, the people themselves had an effective way to demand economy. And by economy, he means like frugality, I guess, in government, balanced budgets. 
before 1930, before 1933, whenever the people became disturbed over federal spending, they, they could go to the banks, re redeem their paper currency and gold, and wait for common sense to return to Washington. So that mechanism, of course, was uh, destroyed in 1933. And uh, look at where we're now, right? So very, very, very true. Raids on Treasury. That happened on various occasions and conditions sometimes became strained. But nothing occurred like the ultimate consequences of paper money inflation. Today, Congress is constantly besieged by a minority group seeking benefits from the public treasury. Often these groups control enough votes in many congressional districts to change the outcome of elections. And so congressmen find it difficult to persuade themselves not to give in to pressure groups. With no bad immediate consequences, it becomes expedient to accede to a spending demand. The treasury is seemingly inexhaustible. Besides, the unorganized taxpayers back home may not notice this particular expenditure. And so it goes on. You couldn't have that without, you know, if you had a, an honest uh, system of gold, redeemable uh, gold money. Taxpayer, the forgotten men, he says. With the restoration of a gold standard, Congress would have to again resist handouts. That would work in this way. If Congress seemed to seem, if Congress seemed receptive to reckless spending schemes, depositors' demands over the country for gold would soon become serious. That alarm in turn would quickly be reflected in the halls of Congress. The legislature, the legislators would learn from the banks back home and from the treasury officials that confidence in the treasury was endangered. And then he talks about, is time propitious? Um, most opponents of free coinage of gold admit that the restoration is essential, but claim the time is not propitious. Some argue there would be a scramble for gold and our enormous gold reserves would soon be exhausted. Uh, he even notes that one of the uh, Federal Reserve presidents at the time, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, Alan Sproul, said the following. Uh, this is not me saying this. This is the Fed president of New York, Fed. And I quote, without our support, the Federal Reserve System, under present conditions, almost any sale of government bonds undertaken for whatever purpose, laudable or otherwise, would be like would be likely to find an almost bottomless market on the first day support was withdrawn. So he shows you here how the Federal Reserve supports the bond market. <laughs> Just an interesting uh, point there. So this is how he ends the essay. And I uh, highly recommend you read the whole thing. It says, but unless you are willing to surrender your children and your country to galloping inflation, war and slavery, well, you know, that sounds familiar nowadays. A lot of wars and our freedoms uh, evaporating everywhere, not only in the U.S., but Western Europe. Then this cause demands your support. For if human liberty is to survive in America, and hopefully the rest of the world, we must win the battle to restore honest money. There is no more important challenge facing us than this issue, the restoration of your freedom to secure gold in exchange for the fruits of your labors. So there you go. That that was uh, Howard Buffett, Warren Buffett's father. So it's a shame that uh, Warren Buffett doesn't go on about this, about how uh, it would be better for uh, not only America, but for the rest of the world to have uh, gold redeemable money because it promotes uh, freedom, small government. It promotes uh, frugality in government and it helps keep government in check. And that's why I go on about uh, gold, uh, our monetary system, the central bankers, uh, and the current, uh, you know, corrupt, uh, fraudulent fiat money system. That actually is taking away uh, everyone's freedom around the world, not only America, and is a system that requires constant war. And uh, I'm afraid uh, that's not going to stop the, the more desperate 
uh, this system becomes, uh, the more liable they are to uh, start conflicts, to uh, take the spotlight away from it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're thinking about it and haven't yet, make sure you share this video far and wide with people that you think might enjoy this kind of content. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, Steam it, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.